Well, hello folks and welcome back to a very, very windy day here in Nova Scotia. It was absolutely insane last night. We had a lot of snow still down on the ground. A lot of snow a couple weeks ago. We've had two wild rainstorms. Last night was still windy. So I don't know if I'm going to use this one or not. Uh, not the best day to do an MPG test, but it certainly is real world, that's for sure. But maybe not super accurate. It's hard, you know, it's hard to say. And if the audio is coming through crappy right now, then I won't even get to use this anyway, but we'll see. If I do use the footage, here's what we have. We have a 2024 Toyota Tundra TRD off-road in the SR5 trim. Truck is completely stock, stock wheels, uh, no air intakes, no nothing as of yet. The only thing I've done to this truck at all is put a set of the OEM running boards on it. Yeah, it is windy and it's getting cold. It was plus eight this morning. It's now minus one already, two and a half, three hours later. No weight in the back really at all. Uh, so no issues there. If I do do this footage, I am just going into Dartmouth from down outside Bridgewater and picking up some flooring because we have some renovations going on in here we need some flooring not a lot obviously if you can tell i'm just going to put it in the back of the truck not on the back so here it is nothing fancy about the truck at all at this point which is a big reason why i want to do the test now i did have my first service yesterday morning so we are at 9654 kilometers so you know i would say that the truck is broken in at this point so I didn't want to do the test too early and I obviously wanted to do the test before I put you know different tires on uh, you know a lift on this thing whatever I end up doing to it I want to get a test out there before I do all that stuff I did just fill the truck up yesterday but I will fill it up before I go I'm gonna do pump to pump we'll see what the truck says and we'll see what pump to pump says so I will go fill up, we'll do our trip, I'll come back and fill up, see the mileage that I traveled, see what the truck says, and see what the actual calculation is. And uh, yeah, we'll see what takes place here. So as everybody knows, every, uh, the big knock on the last generation Tundra with the 5.7 was that it was hard on fuel, especially compared to the other trucks in the segment, you know, the 150, the Ram, uh, with the 5.7 wasn't the greatest but it was still better than the Toyota's 5.7 and then the Chevy the 5.3 the 6.2 nah, you know but the 5.3 was quite a bit easier on fuel than Tundra's 5.7 a lot of it was because of gearing that truck had 430 rear end gears and a six speed transmission and it was around for a long time obviously there's a big branch down obviously uh the good part of that is that it was around forever and they didn't really have any problems with that engine a transmission or anything it was just about bulletproof just about bulletproof so longevity performance it had loads of power it towed great and it sounded phenomenal to me honestly i think it was the best sounding v8 on the market i had a 2007 with borla dual exhaust man it sounded phenomenal so everyone's going to the twin turbo v6 uh, toyota followed suit because they had such a bad reputation for fuel mileage so the big thing with this is how much better actually is it is it worth losing that v8 experience is it worth losing the v8 um sound and potentially some reliability issues who knows you know it's a brand new engine turbo is involved it's more complex that's for sure instead of a naturally aspirated engine so is it easier on fuel if it is how much easier is it and is it worth losing those things well let's find out first things first before we get into the mpg video yes the v8 sounded awesome but this truck gets up and goes so quick well that was one of the cheaper Phillips that I've had for a while so let's reset the trip let's reset where is it reset the mileage 
and we are off. All right, so merging on the highway, just doing what I usually do. Not gonna try to get good fuel, fuel mileage out of this. Not gonna try to mess it up. You know, it doesn't really make a difference to me. I'm not trying to sell you this thing or I have no part in making it. So just gonna be honest with you the whole way through. So I'm gonna set my cruise to around 108 kilometers an hour and we're gonna drive. So let's do that now. All right, there she is. Adaptive cruise is on, so it depends on people doing it in front of me, but that's what I'm doing. So we got a good trip into Dartmouth. Uh, lots of highway driving, lots of hills, and then once I get into Burnside, obviously I'm gonna be in traffic. I got a couple stops to make and then turn around and come back. Okay, like I said, it is windy, so these are absolute real world conditions. A lot of people just do a highway loop and that's it, that's all they show you. But, you know, do you, when you drive your trucks, when you buy your vehicles, when you go places, do you literally only get on the highway and drive on the highway and then turn around and come back? No, you don't. So, this is starting and stopping, this is idling, this is everything. I don't use the auto start, uh, auto, start auto stop feature. It drives me nuts on vehicles. Um, you know, you probably can get a little better mileage out of vehicles doing it that way, but I don't do it. I like about the Toyota is that it doesn't do it easy. You actually have to try. It tells you right in the dash that you need to push the the brake pedal harder to engage it. So if you just kind of drive normally, it doesn't really engage, which is which is nice. But we're sorry, getting, I'm having. We're getting blown around the road here quite a bit already. But uh, yeah, let's go for a drive and see what this thing does and see if it's worth losing all those nice benefits that the V8 had. So we're in a section of the divided highway now. The speed limit has increased. So, so did we. Let's see where we're at. And now we're in also in the very, very hilly section of this highway. This whole section from basically, well, as soon as you pass exit 9, really, all the way in, it's, it's hills, but these ones here are pretty steep coming up to Ingram Port Hill that's a long steep one that chews up the mileage then from there in it's not too bad there are some hills but it's not too bad but uh, anyway where we're at right now we've driven 41.5 kilometers and we're at 12.9 liters per hundred that's what the truck says as of now we got a ways to go yet and a lot of in-town driving to take place of curiosity I want to see how much the fuel mileage gets affected by this hill just in this short stretch so we're going down right now it's at 13 we'll see what it is when we get down there then I want to see what it is when we get to the top translates into mpg i'm not sure but you know hills like that they chew up the gas that's for sure yep so now we're in traffic it will be in here well we got five six miles to go basically until we get to our first stop 
of this type of driving. And right now, where are we at with our mileage? We're at 12.4 liters per hundred right now with our mileage. And obviously, in-town driving is is harder. You're doing a lot of start, stopping and starting and, and idling and all that stuff. So it's going to get worse. It's just a matter of how much worse is it going to get. Boy, it just got nasty here crossing the McKay Bridge. Snow and ice pellets coming through. And on the camera, it doesn't even really show up. It's so crazy how things don't translate through the camera. Clear enough, just like that. Nova Scotia weather, let me tell you. First stop has been made. We've got 10 boxes of flooring in the back of the truck here. I didn't put it on the back, like the box, because I ran into a lot of different weather coming down here. And the way the weather's been recently, I don't trust it at all. I don't trust anyone telling me what's gonna happen. So in the truck it is, that's the safest spot for it right now. I got one more stop in here in Burnside to make and then it'll be on the way home. So I don't know how much weight I just added to this. There's 10 bundles there. I mean, I'm gonna guess that they weigh 30 pounds each, I would think. So basically just threw 300 pound person in this vehicle. That's what I'm guessing, I'm just guessing here. All right, sun is shining. Wait five minutes, eh? But we're heading out of the city and we're at 13.3. I think we were 12.5 when we first got in. So 0.8 of a liter per hundred from driving in town and, and starting, stopping and idling and all that stuff. So it does take its toll, that's for sure. But this is real world and now we got some more weight in this thing too don't know which way the wind's going to be honest maybe i had a tailwind coming in here maybe i'll hit a headwind going out and the mileage will get worse and worse and worse so i guess we'll see here in a little bit so just one more stop to make i'm gonna stop here in tantown and grab a grab a slice of pizza hopefully they got some 130 basically so it's not a guarantee at 1 30 you're gonna get a decent slice of pizza but well, we are almost back just getting ready to pull into the gas station here right now truck is saying 14.1 liters per hundred once I fill up I will show you how many liters it took and I will show you how many kilometers we traveled then I'll go home and uh, do the math on it all I'm not gonna do the math here so I'm slow with math 20 you guys can see that 205.5 kilometers so it's math time all right so i'm gonna try to finish this video off without getting absolutely soaked it is raining again here in nova scotia so i did the math and it works out to be 13.88 liters per hundred uh, so the truck was actually saying it was worse than what it actually worked out to be and an mpg that's 16.95 so 17 mpg basically for city driving uh highway driving idling stops you know all that sort of stuff i'm gonna get in the truck now because i'm i am getting absolutely soaked and let's turn the radio off so we don't get uh, copyright uh anyway yeah so basically 17 mpg which i really don't think is all that bad considering all the stops and starts and in town and the wind all those all those factors all those factors sorry um you know i remember from when i had my 5.7 now it was on 35s it had a leveling kit on it but when i had my 07 tundra my 5.7 i didn't even look at the mileage to be honest because it it just it just wasn't good I think in those trucks you were lucky to get 
12, 13, 14, maybe 15 MPG. So yeah, it's definitely better in this truck, 100%. But once I put 35s on this, once I lift it, we'll have to redo it and see what it is. Obviously, maybe on a day where it wasn't so windy, and if I was just highway driving, did a loop, turn around, come back, it would be better because you could see when I went into town, the truck was saying, I think 12.5, if I'm remembering correct. And when I came out of town, it was 13.3. So almost a full liter per hundred worse after the town driving. And then it got worse on the way home. So I was definitely probably driving into a headwind, but um, it's obviously better. It really couldn't get much worse. It doesn't sound near as good. Uh, it's faster performance wise. This truck's way faster than the 5.7, but that 5.7 sounded so good. I'm gonna do some exhaust stuff to this. Stay tuned for that. We'll see what it sounds like. It's not gonna sound like a V8 though. I can I can guarantee you that. But anyway, that is the numbers. Real world, 100% hands down. Real world. Not trying to make it good. Not trying to make it bad. Just driving down the road. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. I uh, hope it maybe helps some people make decisions on 5.7 versus the 3.4. Anyway, until next time, take care, stay safe, and we'll see you then. Bye.